Is Mac Mini late 2014 still usable and valid in 2021 and beyond, especially when you can buy super fast Apple M1 chip powered minis for just $6.99? Let's find out. Hi guys, in this video we will talk about Apple Mac Mini late 2014, its pros and cons and if it makes sense to even consider purchasing such an old computer. If you are like me who is looking for an entertainment center that can handle daily news browsing, YouTube watching, some basic AutoCAD drawing and simple document processing for cheap price, then it doesn't sound too crazy to look at older Apple computers. To understand my point of view, I'm using ancient desktop computer with an Intel Core E3 from 2012, 4GB of RAM and a standard hard drive. Yeah, it handles everything mentioned very well, but there is one thing that drives me totally crazy and that makes me look for alternatives and it is the noise. Listen to this. Crazy, right? And look at the CPU load. It barely does nothing. So after years of listening to this, I started looking for a quiet replacement. Of course, there are NUC computers that should be fanless and therefore quiet, but the price was way above my budget. The cheapest NUC with ultra slow Intel Celeron chips cost above 300 US dollars. And as you know, running Windows on such slow setup is a pain. The next best alternative was to buy and used Apple Mac Mini. And when I saw an advertisement that someone is selling Mac Mini late 2014 for just 180 US dollars, I closed the deal. It was such a good deal, I set up a meeting and hoped for the best. So I'm on my way to the seller and I hope that he won't scam me with some unfunctional Mac Mini. So I will meet him in five minutes in front of the one of the restaurants here. So let's uh, wish for the best. So the transaction was done and it looked like a nice guy. So I hope that he didn't scam me with some unfunctional Mac Mini and I cannot wait to test it myself at home. Unfortunately, it didn't come with the box. There's no accessories, no keyboard, no mouse, but for that price, uh, I think it's okay. So I finally got home, but first let's talk about specifications. It's a dual-core Intel E5 processor, 4GB of RAM, 1600MHz DDR3, an integrated graphic Intel HD graphics 5000 with 1536MB, and a 500GB hard drive. It weighs only 1.2kg, and it has numerous outputs including two Thunderbolt 2 ports, four USB 3 ports, HDMI port, Gigabyte Ethernet port, audio in port, 3.5mm headphone jack, and finally infrared receiver. You can connect it to internet through Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or Ethernet. So I finally Finally came home, I have Mac Mini itself. I also got power cord to power this beauty. Now we will need to connect a monitor into its HDMI port. Next we will need a Bluetooth mouse and my bro lent me his beautiful mechanical keyboard. So we are set and ready and let's turn it on. The seller told me that there should be the newest Big Sur Mac OS installed and it works. Let's go through this initial setup quickly so we can test Mac Mini as soon as possible. Okay, so it's not Big Sur, but High Sierra version 10.13.6. And it's truly a late 2014 1.4 GHz Intel Core E5, 4 GB of RAM and Intel HD Graphics 5000. There's also 500 GB SATA hard drive that might be slow as hell. Let's do some real world test, like watching a 4K YouTube video. For whatever reason, I cannot seem to set 4K. The maximum resolution that I can choose is Full HD. So when playing single YouTube video in HD resolution, the CPU is at 11% right now. Safari already consumed 800 megabytes of RAM. What I will try now is to open as much tabs as possible with this video on and we will see how many tabs it can handle. So now I have seven tabs with YouTube video open and Mac Mini seems to freeze every few seconds. In conclusion, you cannot open 7 tabs with YouTube videos playing on each of them.
Six steps seems to be all right. It's because how Safari optimized its resources. I think it will kill all other tabs. So there's no significant slowdown. Whenever you switch to other tabs, you see that it is taking quite some time to catch up with the video that was playing. With five tabs open, it seems to be much more swift. When you switch between tabs, it doesn't seem that the sufferer has to reload the whole content. I'm thinking that reason why it is so slow and it can handle only four to five tabs with full HD YouTube videos is that it has a limited four gigabytes of RAM. Right now the RAM usage is at its peak at 3.80 gigabytes. With four tabs open, there seems to be a noticeable improvement in the speed. But occasionally YouTube will switch from full HD to lower resolution because the hardware cannot handle playback on full HD. Even switching from and into full screen mode is not completely smooth. And what I can think of next step is to upgrade Mac OS to the Big Sur. It might have more optimized Safari. As an alternative, I will upgrade with an SSD hard drive that should speed it up considerably. Okay, I just found out. And the reason why I couldn't play a 4K video is because old version on High Sierra does not support some codec that YouTube use for playback. So the solution was to download Firefox and suddenly I have an option to play 4K video. Yeah, the playback seems to be smooth. So this is one tab. Let's open more tabs and test this Mac Mini to its limits. Yeah, Firefox use much less RAM than old Safari. It use only 300 megabytes of RAM and it use less CPU as well. Even though switching tabs is not completely smooth because what Firefox does is that it stops the playback when you switch off the tab and it turned back on when you switch back. It froze again when I opened six tabs in total. So two tabs seems to be a recommended maximum with 2K videos playing. You can switch between tabs without any delay. If you open more tabs, then you will feel a significant slowdown. So after installing Firefox and being able to see significant improvement in the speed and usability, it gave me hope that I should try to upgrade Mac OS from High Sierra to Big Sur. But we will leave it to the next video when I will try to upgrade SATA hard drive with SSD disk. Having said that, let's look at the synthetic test using Geekbench. So the score is 654 for single core and 1327 for multi core. This is about seven times slower in multi core than newest Apple Mac mini with M1 chip and more than two times slower if we consider the single core. That's really bad. Now let's talk about the cons. Apple is known for making the computers that are hard to customize. You cannot just simply swap and hardware as you would with ordinary PC. And this is something you should be aware of when you choose which models to buy. I didn't do such research and it backfired. While Mac mini late 2014 is much cheaper than yearly 2012 Mac mini models, it didn't occur to me that there might be a catch. And the catch is upgradability. The chip is soldered to the motherboard so it's impossible for me to upgrade to 8 GB of RAM. Also opening the case is much more difficult because of different type of screws. And if you thought you could easily install a new SSD disk, you have to swap old SATA hard drive, you cannot have both. In summary, Mac mini late 2014 is not a good choice if you plan to boost it with more RAM or more storage. Is it much better to buy an yearly Mac mini 2012 even though it's much more expensive? That might also have an older Intel chip but at least it has 8GB of RAM and easily interchangeable hard drive. So there you have it. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't done already and see you next time.